Hi YouTube family. Today I want to talk to you about a story, a crime story on Jackie Waller and Clay Waller. And the reason I bring up these crime stories is because sometimes I will see very narcissistic characteristics displayed by the narcissist in the interview or in the story somewhere and I want to show that because a lot of people who've never had to deal with a narcissist on an intimate level or don't realize they've been dealing with a narcissist don't uh, don't understand the scope of the derangement in the narcissist character and when I see this derangement come out I want to show it I, it's it's like trying to explain or describe the Grand Canyon to someone who's never seen it you just don't understand the magnificence of it or how deep it is or how broad and anyway you just can't understand the scope until you're there and you witness it yourself or you experience it yourself and that's where a lot of us who have dealt with narcissists when we try to explain it to other people they just don't get it they don't see the difference between a narcissist and say a person who's just a jerk or a person who's immature or a person who um, is still figuring out who they are. <laughs> it is so much more than that. It is very, very deranged and it's very psychotic at times. I just wanted to uh, bring this story out. It's very sad because uh, this lady, Jackie Waller, ends up being murdered by her husband. Or at the time, I think they, I, I don't think they filed the final papers yet, but they were right there close to doing that for divorce. And, um, he lured her to her his place and he murders her. He completely denies that he did it, but her sister knew right away when she didn't show up after a couple of hours back to, at that, their house that, um, that her sister had been murdered by the husband. And she called police. Anyway, I can give you the link to the story, but I wanted to share with you what happened at uh, the jail. Clay Waller had essentially gotten away with murder. They were not able to find Jackie Waller's body, so after a couple of years, the her, her family agreed to a plea deal where if he would tell them where he put her body, they would only charge him with, uh, I can't remember, it was like second degree murder, and he'd only get 20 years in prison. So it, he agreed to this, and he had to show up for the sentencing, so his uh, relatives was on the phone talking to him about how he should be when he goes into court for the sentencing. He needed to show that he was, you know, remorseful or that he was sorry or show some humility and, you know, feel sorrowful for, for Jackie's family who had to suffer for so long. But his response was this. I wanted to share this with you and hopefully you'll be able to hear some of it. You need to be apologetic and remorseful. I'm not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up in court tomorrow and tell everybody to f himself. Why should I care what they're going through if they don't care what I'm going through? That was the first thing that really shocked me when he said, why should I care what they're going through if they don't care what I'm going through? I mean, it just boggles my mind, <laughs> right? I. Mean, this is where I want to show people who don't understand the mind of a narcissist how, how cruel, how cold, how heartless they are. That they could kill somebody and then not care how that affects the relatives of the, that person. I mean, he, he didn't care that it affected her parents or her siblings. He didn't care because he's so focused on himself you know oh my gosh I, I can't even I don't want to even explain or explore um, the pain he was going through I mean he talks about it here because they don't care what I'm going through um, yeah well buddy there are better ways to handle when you are going through a difficult divorce or when someone's breaking up with you um, she you know Jackie Waller had told him she was leaving him. Well, you know, he had been having multiple affairs and he was not a good husband. And I don't know the scope or the depth of the um, 
problems in their marriage, but obviously just those things right there would be cause enough for her to leave. This guy was a total jerk. So he started to threaten her that he would kill her. Um, and she knew that she shared this with her sister, which by the way is another very good uh, thing I want to share with people is if you are with a narcissist and they're being violent with you and threatening you with death, share that. Share that with somebody. You have to because if she did not share this with her sister, I don't think anybody would have known to get on top of uh, her missing so early on. Like right away within hours, her sister was on it and they were able to find a lot of clues, although they weren't able to find her body. But here's the second part of his conversation with his relative that just totally shocked me. You understand? I'm no, I don't. You're not the victim here, Clay. This happened two years ago. I just want to move on. I'm sorry, I'm going to jail. That's it. Clay is playing the victim here. He asks his relative, do you understand? As in, do you, you know, and he goes on, because do you understand the you know the pain that they're putting me through do you understand that they don't care about me and his relative says no I don't understand you're not the victim here and this is where Clay just blew my mind because he just says it happened two years ago I just want to move on and that's exactly what we have to be concerned about with these narcissists they don't see what they have done and the kind of damage they do even to the point of murder they don't understand the the meaning of that how devastating that is to somebody else all they can understand is their own pain and their own self-centeredness they only want people to know and think about them while they don't care at all about your safety they don't care about you living they don't care at all it's just insane to me that this guy would respond in this way to his relative. So I wanted to share that with you because I think this is just so incredible and people would not even believe that a person could think this way or feel this way unless they saw it, unless they witnessed it. This is the depth of the narcissist's self-centeredness. I walk out them doors. They can't do nothing more to me. I mean, I don't think they can, can they? He knew that he had gotten away with murder. He knew that he didn't have to face the death penalty. He didn't have to face life in prison. He had to serve 20 years, and I'm not saying that's nothing, but he killed somebody. And he knew that after 20 years, he'd be free. And I think it was a maximum of 20 years, so that meant that he could actually get out before then. So he knew he ha did not have to serve the kind of sentence that he deserved. And all he cared about was, is that all? I mean, I think that's all they can do, right? I'm, I'm out scot-free after, after this. And he just wants to get the sentencing over with, go in um, and, and put down and you know curse out everybody who's in the room, her family and relatives, and walk out. He cared only about himself and he thought that he got away with a maximum of 20 years. So what happened though in this case is they were able to charge him with a second aspect of this crime. And that was, um, let me see, what was it called? Interstate domestic violence. Because he had gone across state borders to another state to dig a hole in a park to bury his wife. So, because the crime was committed between the two states, they were able to charge him with and sentence him with an extra 35 years. So, that would be tacked on after he serves the first 20 years. So, essentially, he's getting life, which is really good because finally justice was served in this case. But at the sentencing of the second charge, he had to face the victim's impact statements. He didn't have to face that with the first one because he took a plea deal. The second one, they actually charged him and he had to go through trial or whatnot, I can't remember. But um, so at that sentencing, 
he had to listen to the victim's impact statements from her relatives. And one of those relatives was his own son, who at the time was about, I want to say, between 7 and 10 years old. They don't really say how old he was. But he speaks, and this is what he said. Clay had no reaction to this? He did not. Think it impacted him at all? No. It's so hard to listen to that little boy talk to his dad in that way, and it's so sad that he had to let go of his dad because his dad was such a horrible person that murdered his mom. But here's a picture of their family. That There's Jackie on the left, Clay all the way on the right, and the triplets. These were Clay, I'm sorry, Maddox was actually the only boy in the triplet. And, you know, throughout this story, it was emphasized that Clay kept saying, if you take the children, I'm going to kill you. And it would appear as if he cared about the children. But I want to let you know that narcissists do not care about the children. They care about them as far as they are supply to the narcissist. If they supply love and admiration or whatever to the narcissist's attention, then that's what the narcissist wants. The reason I say that is because if Clay cared at all about his children, he would not want to take away a parent who loves them. He wouldn't want to destroy their world. He would be concerned about their mental and emotional health throughout the divorce but he wasn't he didn't care any about any of those things he cared about him and then he used his children as a as leverage against his wife it wasn't that he cared so much for his children that his children were his last link to his wife his last uh, ability to affect her was through the children and that's what he did he used them to try to control her, to try to make her stay in the marriage. So, you know, YouTube family, I just wanted to share this with you, the story. It was horrible. And, you know, I pray blessings on her family and the children. And actually, the children are doing great. I want to let you know that. If you follow the story, if you watch the video, um, you'll find out that they are doing very well under the care of their aunt and their uncle, who are raising them very well. They're happy. They're adjusted. And they understand what happened, but they're not scarred for life um, in a way that's debilitating and will destroy them. So thank God for that. So YouTube family, I hope that this, this story helps you to put things in perspective, helps you to also see that you're not the crazy one. And also when people don't understand, <laughs> as you try to explain to them your experience with a narcissist, you you will know that there are others who've experienced the craziness with a narcissist and understand the deranged mental state that they are in. So YouTube family, if you find this helpful, I hope that you subscribe. I hope that you like the video, share it, and comment below. And I hope to talk to you soon.